Welcome back to another Dororo review. Today is episode five. I'm Justin. What is up? I'm Logan. And together we're Couch Talk. We're going to discuss the episode and give our scores at the end. You ready to jump into this? Yeah, let's do it. So a lot of this is just growth and development for Hiyakamaru, kind of. As we see, he has his hearing back. And of course, he's lived his whole life not being able to hear anything. So all of a sudden, he has all these sounds just... Yeah, just, he can literally just... I, I don't even think he'd be able to think or... I don't even know how that'd be to be, just suddenly hear. It'd be, it'd be, <laughs> like, yeah, like, it's just... you. Yeah, you're just pure silence, and all of a sudden it's just deafening, like the, the commentator said, it's like reverberating in his head. Just, like, it was just destroyed him so much that even when he got attacked by Spiro, he couldn't fight back. Jesus. <laughs> I do, it is interesting how, uh, um, it seems the more progress that Hyakumaro makes, the actual weaker he gets, which is kind of interesting. Because, like, you know, very beginning of the show, he was literally just a murder machine. It's like, oh, then he, start, he starts getting this feeling back. He starts getting this leg back. Like, he gets hearing back, which obviously dor disorients him. So the more he gets, the more he does to get himself back, he's actually making himself weaker, which is interesting. Yeah, like... <laughs> At least once hearing's out of the way, he doesn't really have much to gain, like, sensory-wise that will affect too much. Like, taste is not going to really right. matter. Well, I mean, he'll, uh, he'll eventually... But when he starts getting, like, his full flesh in... Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's where it'll start to get... Once... He's kind of getting past this hearing as, uh, well, the old guitarist guy showed up, helped him finish off the monster. <laughs> Which... <laughs> Which is good because Hyakumaru is not in a place they can fight. But while kind of like recuperating, the the first soothing sound he hears is of this girl Mio singing in the river. Which, you know, song is great for everyone, right? Music is all right. something. <laughs> so the, that, that's the first time where he can really actually listen to something without completely falling apart. Yeah. It's not just a loud, obnoxious noise. It's not Dororo fucking yelling at you the whole time. <laughs> Dororo is trying. He, he was like, oh. he was covering like, his mouth and he's like, <laughs> and the old guy's just like, get used to it, like yelling at his ears. <laughs> he's like, what? I'm a human. It's like, I'm I don't speaking. know. He, I am pretty sure he still has no idea what the fuck you're saying to him. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, dude. I know he just knows knowledge of. <laughs> the <laughs> Japanese language immediately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so basically they're in this area where we got what? Sakai versus Daigo's uh, area, Ishikawa, I believe. So they're kind of like in a stalemate. Yeah, it's and Mio the, the Virgil the War is definitely yes, because on on the way, I guess. Yeah, and what we learn <laughs> is Mio serves the soldiers. At the end, we learn what that means. Uh, it was obviously hinted towards at one point. Uh, yeah, there's actually like clues throughout, which is interesting. Even her bathing herself, she was clearly washing her body. Yeah, and then when she. Walked and then up when she to Hiakamaru, and then she thought he could see or whatever, but and she like covered herself up. Right when he said he could see souls, she thought her own soul was like you know dirty, which it wasn't. But she probably thinks that way due to what she has to do. Yeah, but she's yeah. obviously doing it for yeah the orphanage of all these yeah. children who are not looking so hot. They're <clears throat> probably similar to that one kid in the previous episode where it's like. Oh, the, the samurai came up and chopped off his leg like, <laughs> or <laughs> arm or whatever it was. <laughs> samurai just come up and chop people, and that'd be that's still awful. It's like, come on. Yeah, and we learn a little bit about Daigo and what's going on in his land. Like, 
there's obviously bad stuff going on. They're having mudslides, no rain during times that there's always rain. So right, I wonder if this is every time Hyakumaru kills one of those demons, like something bad happens because you know, kind of correlated like. Oh, I mean, and it goes back to that like statue thing, maybe. right? Because it could be something like the because you know he kind of sold Hyakumaru for all this you know, good fortune and power. So he's like slowly undoing that. So maybe every time he does it, something bad happens to like, maybe I'm just, yeah, yeah no, that's actually a really good theory. I was thinking like, you know, demons <laughs> only hold their bargain for so long. Right? <laughs> he's like, yeah, maybe, he's just a shit look. <laughs> maybe it's at the point where the demons don't care to hold their bargain. Like, you know what? You've had your power. That and could be true. Like, yeah. We don't care anymore. And it's going to want him to, force him to maybe give up his other son <laughs> who is looking like he looks he, evil <laughs> he's like deadlock like staring at his mother like he's gonna go kill her or something i don't know <laughs> he does look evil yeah but and so yeah we see what's going on there they're the ones getting ready to go to war um the old man while he was out the guitarist was out searching for a place to kind of leave. But he did say if he doesn't come back, that means he found a route. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm <laughs> he's, he's like, I'll go find a place for us. But if I don't come back, I found a place. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Obviously, the good old uh, sand storm like creature things was there. Good old <laughs> demon. Like, those are like, you see him in a lot of stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. What you're I can't about. remember what they're actually called. Uh, it's bothering me. Uh, demon t t trimmer thing. <laughs> I know what a trimmer is. I've seen the movie Trimmers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but there is a safe place there. It's just they have to clear out. Yeah, you're just going to kill the giant demon. Which he does come back to let them know. And uh, Hiakamaru. Decided, you know, he's going to go help with that. Uh, probably because I, I don't know how he knew. Maybe he could sense the demon himself. Or because I don't think he can understand that the old guy was saying there's a demon there. Unless he can recognize the word demon. Maybe. He probably could sense it. Or at least maybe okay. see its aura. Yeah. Like... And we also do to see Hyakumaru's soul in this episode. And it was mixed. Right. <clears throat> Which. It is very fun. Because we know. I think when we very first saw him as a baby. It was kind of reddish. I believe. But maybe he's like slowly cleansing. Because he is like pretty much a demon contract baby. Thing. <laughs> yeah. like, so I'm assuming that's what the evil is maybe. And he's like cleansing yeah, it out of his of system. Demon. And I believe. The little guitar said it was like him. So he's probably similar with that mixed soul oh no yeah because we see his soul it's all flame so maybe yeah that is true uh maybe he did at one point have it that way yeah i could see that because i remember it was like episode two or three or whatever where the guy said he's like me so um it was kind of interesting there because yeah maybe his soul will get why, like clearer and clearer as as we kill all these however many demons there are that we need to kill like six ish or so I think yeah but while he goes to do that Mio's like you know what I'll work harder too and I'll work for both sides of the war <laughs> which just I have a feeling is... she's gonna die or at least yeah. the orphanage kids are all gonna die or something this last part was kind of like sad and like, yeah, and also like depressing. I guess you could say. Dorora was like, "I'll go help." He has no idea what she's doing. He thinks she's doing like actual like maybe serving food or working, you know, stuff like that. Right. And then as we go through the woods, he sees her, and she's just selling her body. It's you know, it's also sad like that she uses that song as comfort. But that's also like the song that Hyakumaro finds peace with. So it's 
kind of like ironic in a way. It's it's not a a pleasant thing. Right. I was like, <laughs> at all. damn. Did we ha I was like, come on, man. Can't someone be happy in this show, please? <laughs> the orphan kids, they don't know. They're happy. I guess. Ignorance is bliss. I guess, well, I don't know if they're happy. They're missing limbs. True. But... They got, you got to watch out for those drive-by samurai, apparently. <laughs> Just walking by. Look out, kids. Uh, yeah, little kids. They do. <laughs> they're like, oh, kid limbs, my favorite. <laughs> it's like, okay. You psycho. <laughs> Uh, and Hyakumaru fights the demon, and he gets his voice back. But at the same time, he loses part of his real leg. Yeah, that's that's kind of. Hmm. I don't. That that thing didn't look defeated, though. I don't think you it. Yeah, it didn't look defeated to me either. Maybe it. Doesn't. Maybe he got the voice back from the bird, and he just you know never knew how to talk. That but is when, true, actually, yeah, because... Because when he got, like, his leg loss, that was probably just reaction, and then that's how he learned, oh, he can talk. Just, dude, Hyakumaru, every time he gets something back, it's at a cost. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, he gets his ears back, he's, like, sent in this, like, mental trauma because he can't concentrate. He gets his voice back, he loses a limp, so he screams in agony. Yeah, and it's like... Now he has to get a prosthetic back, or if he kills a demon, will his legs grow back? It's like he's about to hit up because uh, he is still part demon, so it is possible that like, may maybe since the demon took his leg and he kills it, he'll get it back, or maybe he'll just hit up a uh, June. What's his name? June Kai. Yeah, for a, new, no, for a real prosthetic, <laughs> he can talk now. He'd be like because he doesn't know language, <laughs> and the June guy will be like. Oh, I see you're missing a leg. Here you go. <laughs> it's true. It's like he's going to get all these body parts back and then just lose them all by the end. Because, yeah, I know. Like, uh, he's not used to it. You know? He probably fought so recklessly. Well, I, we know he fought so recklessly before that he's not actually a good fighter when you, you know, start giving him human elements. Yeah, he was perfect. He was a great fighter when he was... <laughs> non-human but the more right. human he gets the worse of a fighter he becomes it's pretty it's pretty shitty for him I, it's i don't know i don't know how it's gonna end because he's gonna be full human and be at his most vulnerable so <laughs> yeah. that's not good yeah we'll have to see how they finish because uh, it does seem like the monster was still alive so I'm pretty sure it's still alive. And it, it kind of seems like a part two-ish thing. Like, finish yeah, the like, fight. Go get your hopefully, leg back. So. Yeah. Hopefully, Mio does not die. That would be very sad. I kept I wouldn't thinking she was going to die this episode, actually. I was like, oh, man, she's going to die. I'm going to feel so bad. And it's, I still think she's going to die. I, mean, I still 100% think she's going to die. And it's going to leave the other children kind of like, oh, we have a safe place now, but we don't have Mio. Right. Ah, oh, goddamn. That or Dororo is going to have to pull her out of some shit. Because <clears throat> the problem is if the soldiers find out that she's serving both sides. All right, it seems pretty dangerous now. Ho I, I just hope she's okay. Because we, we have enough depressing things from everyone else. Someone's got to be happy. Yes, someone. I don't think anyone's going to be happy in this <laughs> by the end of this the show, period. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be one happy character, not even to row, row, row at the very end. Uh, but that does it for the episode. Jump to scores? Sure. Let's see here. Hmm. I'll say, I thought it was a solid, I'll say seven and a half-ish. It was... Seven, seven and a half-ish. It was pretty good. There's, it seemed there's some downtime this episode, but we kind of explored Hyakumaru's, how he deals, how he's going to be dealing with these, like, new senses he's getting. Because, I mean, obviously, I still like the whole, the more he gets accomplished, the weaker he gets. So it's kind of like, it's kind of opposite of, like, all other people who fight. It's like, oh, <laughs> they fight more, they get stronger. It's like, no, he, he gets weak. He literally gets more vulnerable. He risks his 
each time he gets something, it's like you're in more in danger to die. Um, it did bring up a few interesting things, like Hyakumar's soul. That was kind of interesting. Him losing a leg is also kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know if he's getting it back. If he, maybe that's like the lesson he's gonna learn from. Like, okay, now I have to actually fight. <laughs> like <laughs> being careful. But yeah, Mio's story seems very sad, but a, a noble one to try and protect all those children. I hope nothing bad happens to her. I do like how the guitar guy kind of tags along too. You know, he's he's kind of like our, direct, direct our way. storyteller, <laughs> right? He's things. he's kind of the narrator, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I I agree. I think I'll go the the seven and a half. Uh, just very good growth of Hiakamaro as a character and even others. And like seeing basically what it is for the people outside of the wars that are still being affected by it but they're not directly in the combat, but just, I, I'm always like stories like that where it kind of focuses on what's happening to the people around on the outside of it. And really we're exploring what happens is sometimes kids get caught in it. Sometimes samurais walk down the street and chop off, yeah, <laughs> chop off an arm or a leg. <laughs> Do it for sport, I guess. I guess. <laughs> But yeah, this is solid storytelling. It's really what it is. Um, and yeah, I'm very interested to see what happens with Hyakumaro and some of these others as we go on, considering hey, Dororo might have to step up for being... He, he's, he might be only six years old or something. He's, he's got to be a hero. He's got to step up. But yeah, that does it. That's it. It's spiel time. As always, if you don't want us to chop off your limbs for sport, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, right. notification <laughs> bell. Like I saw it right back there. Which one do you want me to chop off your leg with? I recommend none of them because they they're dull as hell. Uh, that would, ew, that'd be painful. It was just like a blunt weapon. It was not going to chop off your <laughs> leg. Anyway, let us know what you thought of the episode. And until next time, peace out. See ya.